The Right Honorable Speaker, our preacher for today, thank you for a very powerful sermon. Members of the Council of Elders of the NDC, the National Executives of NDC, the family of President John Ivan Sata Mills, and as he himself would have said, my brothers and sisters, a decade and a year ago today, the passing of President John Ivan Sata Mills hit all of us like a bolt of lightning and filled us with grief and marked a great loss for our party, the NDC, and our nation, Ghana. 11 years on today, we gather to honor the memory of a man who deserves honor and praise, the man, President John Evans Atamels. Prof, as we all call him, was a distinguished man who served his country with utmost integrity and humility while building a better Ghana for all, not just a few. It was a dull, overcast day. The weather turned cold, almost like today. And it was as if nature itself was conscious of the passing of a great political icon. We still bear the deep scars of pain all these years and are unlikely ever to forget how we felt on that fateful 24th July, 2012. Indeed, everybody can remember where exactly they were and what they were doing when this unpleasant news broke. Professor Tamils was a humane leader who strove to ensure better socioeconomic conditions for all the citizens of Ghana. And evidence of his good works can be found everywhere in our country. Yes, he was a true leader and he was a friend to many. Professor Mills was the epitome of selflessness, always seeking the welfare of others, even at the expense of his own well-being and comfort. Professor Mills was a deeply compassionate and empathetic person who worked tirelessly to leave this country a better place than he came to meet it. Throughout his life, he sought to improve the lives of citizens, including the youth of this country. He was a champion of social justice. His dedication to public service was unwavering, and his commitment to lifting Ghana to the next level is unmatched. He had a single-minded belief in the pursuit of those ideals and values he stood for, and tireless and resolute if he genuinely felt something was the right thing to do. Professor Mills was adept, adept at the use of language and humor, and his formidable intellect inspired many people. He was an innovative taskmaster who got the best out of his team. And sometimes his single line quips have gone into history. For example, Zihufia Sem, when he was asked about the situation in La Côte d'Ivoire. Our late president was also a peacemaker and a unifier par excellence. Many called him Asunjwe Hene, and he was not without cause because he was fiercely dedicated to peace. And often you hear him say the phrase in front of Amazon Mepe Asunjwe. It was not at all unusual of Professor Mills to treat his fiercest critics with respect and decorum, where others would have shown open hostility. This was a man in whom many sterling qualities were blended, but perhaps his greatest strength was his willingness to listen and to tolerate opposing views. He understood that progress could only be made through dialogue and compromise and he was never afraid to engage in honest, respectful, and productive debates with those who held different opinions from his. He believed that 
Diversity of thought and experience was one of our country's greatest strengths. And he spared no effort to create a culture of respect and understanding. He believed in the beauty of Ghana's unity in diversity. Call him father for all, and you will not be wrong. He was a true leader in every sense of the word and his legacy of tolerance and respect for divergence of thought will continue to inspire us all. Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, as we mourn his passing, let us also celebrate his life and his achievements. It is something of an irony that we mark this anniversary of such a great man at a time of deep socioeconomic distress for our country, Ghana. In the hands of the current MPP government, we find ourselves in the throes of economic crisis, severe hardship, suffering, maladministration, corruption, nepotism, insensitivity, and arrogance. Here lies a man who governed this country with humility and sensitivity and superintended our economy with great skill. He made the right calls on the economy and it was no surprise that under his stewardship, Ghana famously recorded its highest ever GDP growth rate of 14.4% with a larger contribution of this growth coming from the rail sector rather than oil. He still holds the record for the longest ever sustained period of single digit inflation. In his day, almost all key economic indices were pointing in the right direction. As compared to the current disarray into which we have been plunged. As his chair of the economic management team, I can attest to his sterling leadership that led to these achievements. With this sound economic base, he launched ambitious and progressive policies that resolved some of the most complex challenges of our national life. The benefits of his policies resonated through all sectors, including education, health, agriculture, security, and more. His government eliminated more schools under trees than any other government in the history of the Fourth Republic. He built more chips compounds than any other government in the history of the Fourth Republic. And only recently I was in the University of Cape Coast and I was giving a stark reminder that the medical school at the University of Cape Coast that is currently churning out young doctors for this country was the handiwork of Professor Mills. His policies in these sectors had far-reaching impact on Ghanaians and made life better for all of us than he met it. He oversaw and laid the foundations for some of the most massive infrastructure that have sustained us in some of the most difficult periods of our history. My brothers and sisters, in an era where this current administration seeks total dominance and control of all state institutions, Professor Mill's brand of leadership, which emphasized strong and independent institutional arrangements, is sorely missed. He was not one to crave power at all costs and manipulate state agencies to do his political bidding. The Electoral Commission was truly independent, and the judiciary did not live in fear of not satisfying the president's wishes by their verdicts. He did not weaponize justice, unlike what we are living through today. He dealt fairly with all who worked under him and took an active interest in their personal development. He was a great talent spotter and I count myself among his many protégés who have gone on to excel in our various fields of endeavor. 
against some opposition, he stood his ground and gave opportunity to young men and women in his government who justified his confidence by handling their assignments with distinction and maturity. He was a multidimensional man who found interest in many disciplines, politics, academia, sports, religion, etc. Before his accession to the high office of president, he had been actively involved in shaping our revenue mobilization system as a country with his fruitful years as head of the Internal Revenue Service. As an academic of considerable repute, many prominent figures in our country today operating in diverse fields of endeavor learned at his feet and benefited immensely from his tutelage. He's also widely reputed as a keen sportsman who loved to compete in the spirit of fairness. Because he played sports, he understood suffering and endurance, and he appreciated that defeat is not the end of life. If one can rise quickly and return to compete again. Professor Mills showed that politics could be done with grace and decency. He proved it when he was unsuccessful at the presidential poll, both in 2000 and in 2004. He also demonstrated that one could be very powerful and show restraint at the same time. A virtue he exemplified with excellence when he eventually won power in 2008 as the third president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. With the worthy examples that he set, he underscored the role of temperance and sound judgment in governance. He proved that modesty and frugality were not at all incompatible with politics and leadership. Professor Mills was a godly man, and he took his faith and belief in God seriously. This reflected in his deep sense of morality and his penchant to express his religious faith whenever he got the opportunity, despite the mockery of his opponents. He held our social and moral values high, and it is no wonder that he was unequivocal in his abhorrence of LGBTQ. Plus, plus, somebody said. Professor Mills' death still remains a bitter pill for us to swallow, and we all miss him. We must all, however, take comfort that he is fondly remembered for all the right reasons, and that there are many lessons to be gleaned from his storied life, not least among them how to be a good human being. And so on this 11th anniversary to commemorate the passing of President John Evans Atamills, let us remember the moments of joy and laughter that he brought to our lives and the lasting impact that he has had on our country and the world at large. We miss him deeply, but his legacy of socioeconomic growth and prosperity, his commitment to peace, and his tolerance of opposing views will continue to inspire us all and to live after him. Rest in peace, our dear President J.E.A. Mills. Rest in perfect peace, Prof. Rest in perfect peace, Asamdre Henning. Thank you very much. Amen.